we also have to look at a very different uh, facet of entrepreneurship, something that doesn't unfortunately get the right kind of uh, play in popular discourse, in common discourse, much like what we spoke about for generally all about, you know, the startup world. So a lot of noise, but uh, pretty little, very little of what's actually happening on ground has been captured. So we're focusing this session on um, how to make business schools startup friendly, right? So Hari did touch upon this, uh, you know, his conversation with ISB, etc. So I have found something similar, which is that a lot of conversation there is focused on placements and jobs and stuff. Uh, whereas a lot of entrepreneurial action is really happening in India and engineering colleges. So I think it will be a good, uh, interesting contrast and I hope that will also be explored. So we have Sudhakar Rao in conversation with Kashyap Kompela. I invite Kashyap to come on stage. So Kashyap is, uh, apart from being part of the FEST team, if you remember one of the slides I showed you earlier and helping us curate the panels here. Uh, he's an award-winning industry analyst, a best-selling author, educator and AI advisor to leading companies and startups in US, Europe and Asia. He's the CEO of the global technology industry analyst firm, RPA to AI, RPI to AI Research. This company advises global corporations, venture capital and private equity firms and garnered agencies on everything related to AI. So you have AI investments, enterprise AI, AI policy, AI governance, AI ethics and so on. He's also the founder of AI Profs, whose mission is to democratize AI education and equip public and private sector workforces with the right skills for the future. Welcome, Kashyap. Thanks a lot for sharing this. Right. Oh, and Sudhakar is... So, Kashyap will introduce Sudhakar, but before I hand this over to him, a word of uh, thanks to Sudhakar. Hi, can you see me? Can you hear me? Hi, Sudhakar. Lovely meeting you. And lovely Same here. Oh, your voice is booming over the hall. Uh, Sudhakar represents uh, the IC ICFI group, he's a director there. And over the years, we've developed, we as in personally, but also more importantly for the FEST, a very close bond. So he's been there as a pillar of support for us. And that has worked a lot in, uh, you know, arranging finances and in generally bringing this FEST to the stature it is in today. So thanks for that, Sudhakar. Thanks a lot. Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you, Ganesh, for setting the context, and thanks to IBS for being such a big supporter of uh, BBLF. So we only have 15 minutes, uh, so without further ado, let me give a brief uh, intro to our topic. Our topic is uh, how to make business schools uh, more friendly. As an alumnus of uh, ISB, I'm going to respond to some of the comments uh, that, that came in the last session between Hari and uh, Ganesh. But uh, let, I have great pleasure in introducing Sudhakar, who is a brand strategist, startup advisor, and author. He heads the branding for the FI group, which uh, is now like 11 universities, 9 schools, 7 tech schools, 7 law schools, plus a very big distance learning program. So I didn't realize that uh, the FI group is like uh, so, so huge. He's also the official spokesperson for uh, the FI group. He's an alumnus of uh, Usmania University and I am Bangalore. And apart from branding, design, he's also interested in uh, design thinking, innovation, diversity, inclusion, and entrepreneurship. For the last one year, he's also been an avid uh, outdoor biker. So, man of many interests and talents. Thank you, Sudhakar. So, my first question is, uh, well, please take two minutes to give your opening remarks on this topic, these schools and startups. Uh, good morning and thank you, uh, Kashyap. Uh, I'm extremely happy to be here. As usual, uh, BBLF is very close to my heart. ICFA Business School and ICFA Group would love to associate with activities and platforms like BBLF. Uh, we would love to continue in future as well. It has been a platform of uh, opportunities, learning, as well as networking for all of us. Every time I was present there uh, at BBLF, I learned uh, meeting uh, several people, I picked up a few thoughts apart from a few books. Uh, this time I'm missing that and I'm doing it uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Benedict and everyone connected with uh, the DBLA. And I also would like to thank uh, my business for my, my faculty members and uh, there physically 
and uh, many other members from the ICFI family who have joined uh, this session virtually. A very good morning to all of them. One good news is that our deep university has been uh, has been uh, graded A double plus by NAC, uh, which is the highest uh, accreditation grade that a deemed university or a university can get. So congratulations for all the members. Thank, thank you all. And uh, we look at uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem because. Uh, it is one of the core tenets of the brand. Innovation, technology, and entrepreneurial mindset. These are the three tenets of our brand. So we have a loaded interest uh, with respect to entrepreneurship and therefore startup world. Uh, startup world and B schools have a symbiotic relationship. More than jargon, what I would like to say today is that the business schools will do well. To, to become a hotspot for startup world. Startups are there everywhere, but there is no particular hub for startups. I think the business schools will have to don that avatar of becoming the hub or the hotspot for startups for a variety of reasons. Given the stakeholders that the business schools attract and uh, true to the positioning of any good business school, I think uh, uh, startups, enmeshing the aspirations of startups with the goals of the B schools. And the third one is thriving on the learning opportunities and the contribution opportunities that we have between a B school and the startup world. I think for these reasons, uh, B schools should become hubs or hotspots for the startup world. I like that framing. B schools as like hubs in the startup ecosystem. So before that, before the next question, a big round of applause to the, the ICFI students and faculty who are here who should have been for this. Uh, and they're doing a lot of uh, the, helping up with the organization. So thank you for that. So here is a question for the audience. Do you think uh, entrepreneurship can be taught in a B-School? How many of you think entrepreneurship can be taught in a B-School? Show of hands. So Mr. Sudhakar, you have a tough job. So can entrepreneurship be taught in these schools? You have to convince our skeptical audience out there. Yeah, entrepreneurship can be taught in a business school, but not in the same pedagogy or not in the same methodology that we have been using. Uh, the earlier response and the current question are interconnected in the sense that uh, the stakeholders like students, stakeholders like alumni, stakeholders like faculty members, stakeholders like like the industry, for example, the corporate relations team that has built meaningful relationships over the time with the business school generates varieties of activities, the give and take between the industry, apart from your internship, apart from family placements. I think that is a very good relationship capital that will be useful to startups. All these things are possible at one go. The faculty members, some of them who are keen on entrepreneurship, will be very good advisor because majority of them would have worked in the industry and therefore they have put in more number of years uh, on this corporate ladder also so they would be a good advisors and mentors then the current students uh, would have an opportunity of working on real life uh, projects real life activities and something where people are betting on them so <laughs> Startups uh, should should operate, should work very closely with them to make use of uh, the different stakeholders' potential that is already available within the B-School system. So that's the point. And you can't teach it in a in, in a in a manner that you know I have a few slides and you sit down and listen. I think that the teaching is more in terms of practicum. Uh, every every course has got a practicum angle, and uh, all that practicum courses can be delved into these uh, startup exercises for their feasibility, for their research, for, for finding insights, for probing further and making sure that uh, the business is all, all set for takeoff. I think uh, those, uh, uh, those commissioned projects will be extremely useful, not just from the point of view that they would earn some money, but more importantly, because it's real life. 
I think that's where is the, is the big connect and that's where the teaching learning has to happen and it's not in the regular method. It has to be practical method. I think I agree with you that it has to be more pragmatic approach, not just a classroom approach with a lot of all the interventions that you suggested. So one question that comes up when it comes to B-Schools is, uh, let's be honest, the number one metric by which B-Schools are judged is their placement statistics. Like everybody wants to see those one crore packages that are offered to their students, the newspapers for each batch. So there is that metric by which or the expectations about the students. But there is also a lot of excitement about startups compared to say when I did my MBA maybe 15 years ago to now. Startups are so much more accepted part of uh, the students' aspirations. So do you see a lot of change in how students are thinking about startups, your B school students? What changes are you seeing? Yeah, Kashyap, I think this is a bigger question of uh, what is the kind of faith on entrepreneurship. The kind of social value and appreciation that we associate with uh, good placements and uh, very good uh, uh, average salary is very different from uh, a dip into entrepreneurial venture. I think uh, it, it has to change uh, slowly. Uh, I'm sure it is steadily changing, but uh, neighbors, parents, society, and our own schools, all of us will have to uh, treat it as uh, a great feat of uh, adventure sometimes, sometimes bravery and sometimes uh, of courage uh, when a student gets into a startup or entrepreneurship venture. In the sense that some of the business schools where you studied and I studied have actually distorted this perception. Uh, our schools where we studied uh, have uh, hit the headlines and distorted the picture saying that there's a large figure of uh, placement that has happened. Although it would be a half a percent or one percent uh, of the entire student population in that particular school. I think uh, the media also will have to play the demand and uh, probably assign a greater value for the courage a student has displayed by by actually picking up entrepreneurial uh, venture. Uh, slowly it will change. Uh, there are ways in which business schools will have to react to this and uh, put a system in place. I would again borrow this from the social system that uh, whenever a child is doing anything extraordinary, the parents actually provide some resistance. So there's no parental faith in entrepreneurship as well. So, so institutional faith parental faith and societal faith in entrepreneurship are, are have to actually grow in tandem and when i stick to institutional faith it is not okay just to have a incubator it is not okay just to talk about startups and it's not okay just to have some lectures about uh, uh, startups i think we need to celebrate we need to celebrate not just those who have uh, entered into startups but also celebrate the failures. I think the day we do a, a song and dance about the failure, the day we have the patience and time to look deep into the failure, celebrate and normalize it, I think that day business schools and education institutions would have uh, been properly ready for welcoming this uh, startup culture on their campus. Absolutely. I think that resonates very strongly with me. Being more acceptable, accepting of risk taking and the failures that are associated with it is one of the key success factors. So the previous session, there was a discussion, Hari said that uh, ISB is charging 40 lakhs. That discourages uh, risk taking because we have a big student loan. So I want to sort of understand this. There is also research that shows that the most successful entrepreneurs are people who start at 45. At the age of 45, not like young students uh, right away jumping into startup entrepreneurship. So, do you see like uh, what, what's the right uh, age to start up or right stage to start up? Or any thoughts on that? I have two uh, responses on this. There is no particular age, although the current data that's available would say that uh, probably startups aged around 40 are very successful. But the data is going to change as we have more and more uh, success stories are going to be chronicled. Second, 
the possible reason why people in the age group of 40 are successful is that there is that wisdom and experience and the real life, real world experience that has helped them in probably steering their ideas after having worked for say about 10 15 years before that a lot of them are still doing that. a lot of guys who have taken to entrepreneurship among our own students of uh, ICFA business school in various parts of the country i said nine business schools somebody who worked in uh, who studied in hyderabad and uh, lived in lucknow and worked in uh, chennai and japan has now put up his startup in dehradun okay so that's beyond 10 to 11 years somewhere closer to that 40 year mark or 38 years mark okay now this is going to change because there is there is that learning that has come up into the system additionally if b schools as a proposition become hubs and the hotspots the faculty members and the alumni and the industry connects will provide that bridging uh, which is now required for a young startup guy with the advice of say the experience of 15 20 years i think it has to work like that and it will not be appropriate to uh, uh, keep a age bracket for uh, as a right age for the startups i think it is it is the right mindset and right knowledge and the right exposure what the startups are not doing is that the ability to take the feedback from market there is a greater enthusiasm on one hand but there is equally less enthusiasm on receiving the feedback on uh, from elders or from seniors or from those people with experience. I think that is the portion which has to be worked upon and then things will be all right and this age will actually go down. But absolutely, we should not have any uh, stigma with respect to age as well. Anybody can start up anytime and that democratizes uh, the entrepreneurial uh, opportunities across the country, across all demographics. I take away the having the right mindset rather than any age and having an open mind to feedback. In fact, we have an example in Bangalore, a very inspiring story of a 79-year-old entrepreneur who's starting up again. Anybody knows who, who's that? Very successful uh, startup entrepreneur in Bangalore, 79 years old. He's starting a company called Happiest Health. Yeah, Mr. Ashok Sutha. So I'm not sure if the age is going to reduce because if we have examples like Mr. Ashok Sutha. But, but yeah, I think right mindset. Right. So we're almost uh, running out of time. But I just wanted to quickly pick your brains in terms of uh, what are the specific ways in which B-schools are encouraging entrepreneurship? Incubators, deep plan, venture contests, mentoring, seed fund, program flexibility. What are you doing at IMS? To make startup friendly. B-schools are startup friendly. A lot of business schools are trying to do this, either either because the regulators are asking them to do or because it's the buzzword. More than these two things, uh, well-meaning business schools will have to engage in a very steady and constant activity. For example, a couple of decades back, uh, people called uh, what is soft skills has been included in their curriculum just for the sake of inclusion but actually they didn't mean anything about it so today uh, the requirement is again about startups incubation and things like that so beyond lip service beyond uh, using it as a buzzword i think we need to get deeper into these things one example that i can give is that you can have your incubator and you should also seek for some of the workers based on merits, the institution should create a special vehicle to seed fund some of the ventures. What it amounts to is that evidence of institutional faith in their own students or in their own startups will go a long way and encourage uh, the world outside, the VCs, to actually enter and take it forward. I, I, I think even parents will have to do that, but that's a different point altogether. But institutions and business schools will have to create a special vehicle and they will have to fund some of the startups on merit, which which some of the schools are already doing. They may not be business schools, but some schools are already doing that. The second thing that uh, business schools will have to work on is enlarge the spectrum of this entrepreneurship. We are working on these youngsters only when they are coming to us. Instead of that, the B-School should actually partner with several other 
uh, undergrad schools or actual schools up to 12th that is the k-12 segment as well and catch them very young with hackathons and competitions and contests and have a methodology of bringing them to our business schools at a very very young age bring them have a competition let them go back they will see that this particular b school is emerging as an epicenter of all the activity and the hustle and puzzle of startup startup and therefore they'll have a greater affinity for this activity and also respect i think uh, enlarging the spectrum catching them younger and uh, mentoring below the ladder that is the downstream as well uh, by business schools will actually meaningfully create a, a truly thriving startup culture and being very friendly with the startup world some of the seeds of uh, startup uh, culture early by encouraging younger students so we'll wrap up in 2 minutes but uh, i would like to take one audience question you can just say the question and i'll relay that back to mr swahata so startups and b schools do you have any questions for mr swahata one uh, one question we will take yes sir please so the question mr sudhakar is uh, do you have some data on what the question is uh, what percentage of students do you see ending up in startups maybe immediately in the long term short term uh, okay. so from our own startups not work but from our own experience we are seeing that it is it is now closely touching up to 10 to 12% earlier it was hovering around 5% but it is it is somewhere around 10 to 12% uh, that is why they are still on campus i'm sure over the next one decade after their graduation a large number of them at least uh, 25% of them would end up as entrepreneurs i mean that that's what is the trend that we are inferring from the data that we have thank you for that and we are almost out of time so any what last uh, concluding remarks please take a minute not more than that yeah i i i think it is yeah i think it is a long uh, persuasive game of successes and failure tips and messages uh startup world business schools uh will have to work uh, in a symbiotic uh, fashion i have been said uh, that we've lost him having, his... having said that we need to we we need to write more cases I, we need to create more simulations and we need to bring these startups into the classroom and take the classroom into startup i think that's that's where we'll do well yep yep bring the classrooms into the startups and take the classrooms into startups i think that's a wonderful note to close on a big round of applause for uh, mr thank you mr sudhakar yeah thank you kashyap